I've noticed some interesting comments to a video I posted a couple weeks ago, and I find it interesting not so much for what it says about the video, but for what it says about our society. So we'll ponder that next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Well, hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution, and we teach the rising generation to be free. I am glad you could join me today. As always, I'm going to point you to the website, constitutionstudy.com, where you can find everything Constitution Study. I'm working real hard. I'm trying to make 2020 a breakout year where the Constitution study is going to grow from this small little thing I've been doing by myself to something that involves a lot more people and a lot more growth. So if you're interested in helping out, head over to the website, see what you can do, whether it's buying books or donating or spreading the word or volunteering or bringing me into one of your events, either online or in person, whatever we can do to take this idea that we are responsible for, to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves, and for our children and spread that around. And with that, I want to discuss what I've noticed in the comments to the video. Now, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video basically saying what we can learn, what we should learn from what's been going on in the state of Virginia lately. As a short recap, uh, after the recent elections in November, let's just say the legislature went very anti-gun and they've proposed a lot of anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment, anti-gun owner, to be more accurate, legislation. And this has caused quite an uproar. And in fact, as of that right, the writing and recording of that video, uh, something like the order of 88% of the counties had declared themselves sanctuary counties, either by resolution or by ordinance. And it was quite, it's been quite an, uh, a, a grassroots, um, movement of the people saying, no, you can't do this. And while I find that very encouraging that, that people are actually standing up, I did note one thing that has bothered several of my viewers. You see, in my opinion, if the people of Virginia had invested a fraction of the energy they're investing in the Second Amendment sanctuary movement in actually vetting their elected representatives, well, the Second Amendment sanctuary movement probably would not have been needed. Now, the reaction that I've gotten has varied, but what I find most interesting is the number of people who said, don't blame the people. We have redistricting. We have people spending money. We have plans that, that leaders are putting in place to do this. It's not the people's fault. And I understand. We all want to find some, somebody else to blame, some, some boogeyman that it's, it's all their fault. It's never our fault. And then kind of like Han Solo in the original Star Wars trilogy, right? It's not my fault. But if we forget that the people have some level of responsibility, we won't fix the problem. Now, most of the people who've made these comments point to the Democratic legislature or the fact that a large percentage of the population lives in a relatively short area, heavily under the influence of Democratic officials. But that doesn't change the fact that representatives from across the state are elected by the people. Okay, so the politicians lied to them. Well, that's nothing new. If you're surprised when a politician lies to you, then, well, that's part of the problem. Yes, there are groups that are pushing for this, and I think they're wrong. But ultimately, it is we the people that's how the Constitution starts. Remember, we the people. It is we the people that got our states to form this Constitution. And it's we the people that elect our representatives. They work for us. If they're not doing the job we want, we should fire them. And we have the chance to do so every few years. Yes, people talk about apathy and lack of involvement, but isn't that the problem? People talk about Bloomberg and other organizations spending millions of dollars buying advertising. Really, your vote can be bought for a few pieces of silver? See, I, I, I don't want the people of Virginia or, more importantly, the people of America to forget that while, yes, there are actors who are acting in bad faith to control gun owners, 
It is ultimately the responsibility of we the people. Ultimately, the people in office are there because we the people put them there. Whether we were misled, whether we didn't do our jobs, whether we just didn't vet them, or we just didn't care. Ultimately, we put them there. They are our responsibility. They are acting in our name, doing our work, and we have to hold them accountable. And if we're unwilling to do so, the problems are not going to get any better. Everyone's concerned about what's going to happen in Virginia should the um, legislature, should some of the legislators fulfill their threat to use the National Guard or, to, um, or the state police to confiscate firearms. Wouldn't it have been better if we invested the time and effort to actually vet our candidates and say, if this is what you want, if your job, if your goal is to infringe on my rights, you're not qualified. We'll find someone else. Sadly, we don't. And it's been a lot of time. It's been over 100 years to get here. But if we don't recognize our responsibility in this, this will never get fixed. You can change all the people you want in leadership, in uh, lobbyists. If you don't change the understanding of the American people, have them involved, have them engaged, and have them not only voting, but voting intelligently, voting based on information and facts, voting based on an understanding of the candidate and what the candidate has done and what the candidate is going to do, and then hold them accountable to their oath, hold them accountable to what they told you, hold them accountable to their oath of office, well, then it really doesn't matter because all we'll do is change one set of scoundrels for another. So for those of you who've written comments, and I've read them, and I've responded to them, I understand the, the desire to blame it on somebody else, but we have to take part of the responsibility for ourselves. Otherwise, this is not a country with self-government. This is a country with an aristocracy. And if we're going to just swap in different aristocracies based on the recent election, we've lost the blessings of liberty. Because all we're going to do is change one people's desire to infringe on our rights for another people's desire to infringe on our rights. So I hope the people who were unhappy, mad at me, even a couple that called me names, understand it's not that I don't think there are other people, there aren't other forces, but we have to recognize our responsibility as citizens. We have to treat our vote as something more important than getting out of jury duty. Otherwise, this experiment of self-government is doomed. In fact, it has failed. So tell me what you think. Put in your comments. Let me know. I'll answer them as well. I'm sure several of you will still say that it's no, it's not the people's fault. They had nothing to do with it. They're pure as the wind-driven snow. But facts show otherwise. Until we treat our representatives as our employees, they'll continue to get away with whatever they want. So head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Let me know what you think. Most importantly, be involved, be engaged. It's the beginning of 2020, so now would be an excellent time to actually meet the people, the candidates for offices and start talking to them. Ask them the hard questions. Will they support their oath? Do they know what their oath of office is? Will they support it? What have they done to support it in the past? What are their plans to support it in the future? And then decide, not based on the party, not based on how they look, not even based on their promises, but on the constitutionality of their positions whether or not they are going to secure your blessings of liberty or infringe on your blessings of liberty. And if we do that, then maybe fewer states will have issues like Virginia is dealing with right now, but only if we the people educate ourselves and take responsibility for our vote. So enjoy the rest of 2020. I'll see you next time on The Constitution Study. Wherever you make your stand Came from a long through line of everyday Americans.